So I know that I'm not a very good blender uh, with a brush. I usually use an airbrush, but you've been blending with a paintbrush for a lot longer yeah. than that. Yeah, you can do both. Yeah. So you're going to show us today on a power sword how mm -hmm. to do some relatively simple blending that will allow, I'm assuming, painters to be able to do some pretty cool effects that maybe they can't do now just with dry brushing and such. Yeah, definitely. And like, I don't know, it's usually the sergeants are carrying the power swords. Your leaders have the special weapons, so you want them to look cooler. And also this kind of approach is a non-metallic metal area. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to keep it simple on this one and just kind of work with doing a single blend, single uh, progression. But yeah, that is the plan. Make some cool. beautiful power swords. Maybe I can start to learn how to blend because uh, I still don't really. You tried to teach me once before, and I it just it's I, I just haven't picked it up. So we'll you're gonna learn today. <laughs> learn today. Nice. <laughs>
you might be thinking, well, hey, this layer of paint looks kind of crappy. And that's good because if you're fully covering that first coat of paint with your next highlight, your paint is probably too thick. Like I said, the rule of threes, you want to do everything in three thin coats, not super watered down, just thin coats, which may involve some watering to create the thinning. But yeah, I don't have a massive gob of paint on my brush, as you can see. And I'm always pushing the paint in the direction that I want it to wind up. A lot of the time, when you lift your brush up, it has a tendency to just to leave uh, a puddle at the end of it. So if I was trying to highlight up here, I wouldn't be sweeping my bright colors down in this direction. I'm gonna leave that alone for a little bit and let it dry. Pull some of the darker turquoise about halfway through here. And you guessed it, swipe it up towards the bottom edge. So it's starting to get there. You can see where it's going. Ordinarily when I'm painting, I'm doing this, letting this dry, doing another part of the figure. Maybe this color exists somewhere else or maybe doing five or 10 of these at once. Who knows what you're doing in your house. Now moving down here, I've got a little bit of purple mixed in with the turquoise. Lay that down right here. And up top. I don't know if you can see right here, there's kind of a scrape happening because I'm not giving it enough time. I'm being a little antsy in the video but this is what you don't want. You see, it wasn't fully dry, so this little white dot is popping up. That's okay, you're gonna layer many more colors over that, but good, there's what not to do. We wanna get our mid-tone in here again. All right, I'm just gonna take a little uh, break and let this dry a little longer. See, it's kind of starting to rip up. So we'll give it some time. All right, watching paint dry, break two is over. We're trying to keep the video a lot faster for you guys, so. <laughs> I guess it seems like more time when I'm just sitting here waiting for things to dry. But uh, yeah, so we're back at it. Just uh, covering up mistakes that I made before because things weren't dry enough. But I'm glad that that happened so I can show people. So I'm still kind of working. I haven't gone all the way to like absolute white or absolute deep purple. Still working with a lot of mixed half tones. But I'm trying to cement the, the darker parts and the lighter parts in there. We'll get to them eventually. Yes, I'm a brush licker, if you haven't noticed. Um, I've heard some people, I mean, I've, I've had people demonstrate the two brush blending technique to me. And with the inclusion of the retardant, I think that I'm doing the same thing where you're laying paint down and then I'm able to eat the paint and then quickly sponge it back up to create that smooth blend. I don't know, here's a, if you look at my thumbnail, this is a good example of how thin that paint really is. You see you're just building up layers and layers. Okay, moving a little brighter and a little darker this time again. And also trying to build it up in a progression. I'm not swiping the brush over so much of the sword anymore. You can see I'm in like the top quarter of it. Okay. 
So lay that mid purple down again. Now it's starting to finally get somewhere. Takes a little time. You can modify this however you want to. Faster or slower. Sometimes I start off just by wet blending all these colors together to get my start. Kind of depends on the level of quality I'm going for. Okay. Oh, that mid turquoise. Okay, now I'm going to take some of the purple here, mix with a little bit of black, put it on the very end, increasing the contrast. It's all about that contrast. Finally getting somewhere. Um, since the nature of this sword, at the end of it, I'm going to cover it in crackling lightning. And it's, it's a nice way to kind of cover up your mistakes as you go. As well, if you happen to rip the lower layer, you can just put a stripe of lightning across that and no one will ever know, except for me. I like that little rip from the very beginning that keeps popping up on the end, that is going to be a, a strip of lightning, I promise. Going almost to pure white, but you can see it's still super thin. Just sweeping it on. Probably take this moment to uh, take the mid-tone here, edge the sword, just like that. Again, I'm not using it like a pencil. You see I'm using the side of the bristles. Kind of stopping me from making mistakes. But. Okay, let's blend here. I'm gonna go even darker with the, the purple black. Again. Nice and thin. Yeah, I'm so in the habit of licking my brush, brush sometimes. I lick the brush and then wipe it out in the water, if you haven't noticed. So, I don't know. If you can break the habit, more power to you. Take one more attempt at covering that rip from the very beginning. It's a frustrating rip. There, it's slightly disappearing now. Cool. So that's my blend on the power sword. The next step, I'm going to work with this uh, mid tone here and paint some some lightning stripes on it. I'll make sure I don't have uh, too much paint on my brush because I don't want to make a really fat line. I'm just trying to use the tip of it this time like a pencil and just kind of scraping it across here and there. It's a little different to do this in the in the video. Usually my face is like glued to my hand like shoving the sword in my eye trying to paint all the details. But I think you get the picture here. I feel like the closer my face gets to the sword, the thinner my lines would be. But yeah, it's gonna have it crackling across the sword. It curves a little weird, so I'm just gonna kind of pull the direction down a little bit. Yeah. 
guys see that rip? You're gonna get it. There we go. That line's a little fat. So I'm gonna get rid of that. But thanks to the retardant, I'm able to kind of sponge my mess up. Okay. A little more lightning. I'm kind of going up and down as well as across the sword to kind of get some variation in the line. This looks a little crooked and scraggly. So that's the lightning covered sword. Let that dry a little bit. And then what I have up here is some blue ink, just to kind of unify all the tones. I'm gonna filter them through an ink wash, a really thin one. You can see the consistency here is barely there, but it will have a slight effect. I'm gonna move it from the lightest color down to the deepest color. Remember what I said earlier, it tends to be a puddling effect at the end of your brush strokes. So, don't want that dark blue to puddle up on top of the white, it'll make things weird. All right, let's let our filter dry for a little bit, and then could probably put one more coat on here. You can get weird with these filters if you want to. Um, let's see. I'm just gonna take a quick break and let this dry again and then get weird. All right, so I promise we would get weird and we will. First, take some of that pure white and wherever there's like a, a kink or a crackle or basically wherever I see fit, on this lightning bolt, I'm gonna add some little dots just to increase the contrast and add a little variation. And yeah, this paint is not watered down because I want it to just kind of stick on top of everything. smudge cool so yeah I just wanted to bring the lightning bolts back up a little bit uh, this is a soothing sound those lightning bolts are finished and uh, as far as getting weird I was uh, painting a commission over the weekend and I kind of did this and then started toning it out with different ink washes so I just wanted to show you I got some red here and I'm just gonna keep the red kinda down in the area where the purple is transitioning to the blue just to see what happens you see it kinda lights things up a little bit it's uh, working with that blue to make make a purple down in the purple area I don't know experiment you know like could add some greens to this, whatever you want to do. But uh, yeah, so that's just a quick example of how I go about making power swords, magic weapons. This is kind of a non-metallic metal for beginners approach too. You know, you can kind of see if I had done this in some gray and blue tones, it just looked like a steel sword or maybe I want a golden sword. But yeah, you can take this example and make something like this. Uh, this is a commission I did over the weekend, like I said, custom Ezekiel miniature with a fancy sword. But uh, yeah, so that's a sword, a quick run through. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm Samson. You can see my work at samsonminis.blogspot.com.
Thanks to Tabletop Minions for having me, and we'll see you in the future with more videos.